Question from Flat Booty Nino. Uh, do you have any tips for someone who's trying to get into the industry and how do you protect your art from the vultures? I guess this would be like if you could go back and tell 20-year-old Lido something, what would you tell her? I would tell her not to share her ideas before they were done. And I would t- tell her not to um, be too generous and let everyone that gives her a like or a follow in mm. um, really protect your privacy and curate yourself from the get go. So if I was, you know, 19 year old Lido now today and I wanted and I didn't exist online, but I had this wonderful song. I would make sure that the song comes in a beautiful package in a well thought with a well thought picture or illustration that really makes sense with what, what, what it sounds um, and separate my art persona with my personal, like with my personal online or my personal name, you know, keep those very separate. That's very important. And um, to protect your art, you know, depending on what country you are, you know, in Canada, we have SOCAN, which is the, what is it? Uh, Performing Rights Association or something? Yeah, Yeah, it's like, yeah, like, like Writers Association. So even the songs that I haven't put out yet, I, I, I have my lyrics and I have the music and the shareholders and all the people that are included and just protect everybody and, and write that so that if anything happens down the line, you know, you can quickly take the music down or, 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 or have people pay you. Um, yeah, find a publisher. Um, don't be afraid to ask people who are in management or publishing for, for questions. You know, most, most managers are, 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 are really good, and especially people that run independent labels. They have a lot of knowledge, so don't be afraid of befriending those people. And those are the people that are going to guide, you know, people that are invested in something, people that are invested in sound, people that are investing in the music industry. You'll know when it's for the right reasons and you should be with those people. And the most, most, most important advice that I would give people that are starting in music, especially people who are very talented and they have that star and like light in them, people like us, attract the worst people mm-hmm. we attract leeches and we attract people that want to be famous or bright by association instead of looking within themselves so you have to be very careful with those kinds of people and don't 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 accept people complimenting you all the time if you have a friend that all they do is compliment you that's bad that's bad. You need the friends that are going to be like, you look a mess. You think that's, that looks good on you? I don't think so. You know, like people that really care about you and that will give you constructive criticism instead of just adulating you. That's dangerous. So Amazing. I, I want to actually bounce one thing off you, Lita. Like I came up in a different career path because I came up through a recording studio, so it wasn't like a public-facing side. But I remember when I was like 21-year-old Damien, asking advice for some older people in the studio. I think I was working on projects where, like, the producer was asleep on the couch most of the time, and I was kind of, like, <laughs> sitting there kind of doing everything. Um, and, you know, I was kind of certainly aware of, like, okay, there's different ebbs and flows. But I asked someone about this, and they said, um, and again, please bear in mind, this is, like, a behind-the-scenes thing, but he said to me, well, you'll go through a few different phases of your career, the first one is nobody cares and no one will give you any, uh, no, you can't get in the door. Then the next phase is like you manage to get in the door, but you can't really do much. Then after that, which was one that I was in, which is that you're through the door, but people are basically going to take advantage of you for a while. And then you have to hit this point as soon as you can where you have enough clout, basically, or enough of a reputation to be able to put your foot down and not accept it. Um, and I mean, it, it's funny looking back on it because because it, it was in the UK, and you know the the class system is a very real thing over there. Um, so you know it's almost like except being a peasant for a while or something. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't think that's exactly correct. But it's like also just being aware of which different stage you're at. But I think ultimately getting to that point of like representing yourself and having carrying yourself the right way, 
and I, I really believe in like giving everyone around me a shot or a chance at kind of working with me or doing something together. And then if I, I find if someone is not behaving honorably or in a way that I feel good yeah. about, then you just very, just very nicely let them go. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. almost like you're, dig you're, you're yeah, panning. Be diplomatic. Yeah. You're yeah. like. Be diplomatic, but just know you just, the more that you do this, you, it's just so obvious. Mm -hmm. I rather work with someone that has 500 followers, but is very extremely professional, talented and has good ear than working with someone that supposedly does the same thing and have millions of followers, but they're a complete asshole. Mm. Like, it's just not going to work, yeah. you know? So and you, Yeah, so think yeah, of it with people, it's, it's a, a bit like panning for gold. It's like you have to put a big, a big shovel of dirt in your pan and you shake it around and most of them are going to fall through, but then you find those little gold nuggets yeah. and those are the ones to keep. So the people who are good people, like, have their back and treat them incredibly well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and then you can take them along, yeah. you know, like to me, the people that I work with, most of them, you know, have are people that have been working with me or that we've had a relationship or worked in any capacity for the last five to six years. So to me, I have a vision that we're all growing together mm. and that we're all going to go somewhere together. You know, I with Miss Columbia, I kind of feel like this is my actual first album. You know, I feel like La Papesa was like an EP that was like too long to be an EP, but now there it is, you know, but I feel like Miss Columbia is like, okay, this is it, you know, and like, I had my kids, I kind of did it all in reverse, <laughs> the order, <laughs> yeah. you know, and support, you know, eh. but at the same time, it's like, you know what, now I'm going to go on tour and everything is way more easy. It's easy. Like I have figured it out. I cracked the code. I'm very happy. I have my shit together. Now let's bring all this music industry bullshit because it's ninety nine percent of the time. The, 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 you know the good the good percentage is when you're alive, mm. when you're alive in front of an audience or like moments like what we're living right now when we're just you know just talking about music and we love it. You know, but yeah, for whoever is starting, you know, you need to have thick skin. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that video. A couple of more links here for some talks we think you'll like. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and otherwise head over to completeproducer.net so that you can connect with other music making geniuses from all over the world. We'll see you there.